Hi, in my last video I finally got around to pretend to teach something useful and talked about the difference between similes and metaphors. In an attempt to find more interesting examples than the usual Shakespeare, I delved into metaphors and techniques in science, which now brings me to what is probably the world's worst metaphor, Schrödinger's cat. Doesn't keep you from wearing a fangirly t-shirt, does it? Nope. I already mentioned Schrödinger's cat in my last video, but due to the frequent references in popular culture, I thought it should have its own video. Schrödinger's cat was devised by Austrian physicist Erwin Schrödinger in 1935. Although it's called a thought experiment, it actually is a metaphor, at least in the wider sense of the term. A metaphor to explain the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum physics, or more exactly, quantum superposition and the collapse of the wave function. While I'm explaining it further, keep in mind that I'm not a physicist, but a humanist. I'm just very interested in quantum physics. But I have to confess that my interest has more to do with the philosophy of quantum physics than with the actual science. However, discussing its merit as a metaphor is something I'm completely qualified to do as a literary scholar. Remember, metaphors transfer the understanding from a better known source to a lesser known target. In this case, the target we're trying to understand is the behavior of an electron. The source is a cat. If you are interested in a better and longer explication than mine, you should watch the video Schrödinger's Cat by 60 Symbols. Link is down there. But in short, the infamous thought experiment is as follows. If you put a cat in a box with a bottle of poison, which, with the help of a radioactive device, is ready to break open at any time, and then close the box, until the box is opened, you can't know if the cat is dead or alive. In quantum physics, the principle of quantum superposition kicks in, which in this case means that the cat is both dead and alive at the same time. Only when you open the box, you can tell if it's dead or alive. Ah, the weirdness of incomprehensive science with a dash of animal cruelty. No wonder popular culture references to Schrödinger's Klett include the series House MD, Futurama and Doctor Who. In the American sitcom The Big Bang Theory, it is used as a relationship advice. The message being, you have to open the box to find out if the relationship is good or bad. If we want to discuss its merit as a metaphor, we need to look at both target and source. The target is the famous double slit experiment. There is an excellent animated video on YouTube by Dr. Quantum, link is in the doobly-doo, which explains it a bit better than me. Basically, if you shoot particles through one slit at a screen, you get a one-band pattern. If you shoot particles through two slits, you get a two-band pattern. Now that's particles. Waves behave differently. A wave going through one slit will create a one-band pattern. A wave going through two slits will create an interference pattern. Now back to quantum physics. If you do the same experiment with electrons and you shoot electrons through one slit, you get a one-band pattern. If you shoot electrons through two slits, they will create an interference pattern, just like waves. And nobody knows why. The scientists said maybe the electrons interfere with each other, so they shot them through one at a time to avoid interference. But the electrons still created an interference pattern. And then they put a measuring device by the slits to observe how that was possible. And guess what? As soon as they were observed, the electrons produced a pattern of two bands. The act of observing had changed the pattern. We call this the collapse of the wave function, and it happens by observing or measuring. How is that possible? Now, I don't want to blurt it out, but actually no one knows. But there are theories, and one is the Copenhagen interpretation, created from 1924 to 1927 by, amongst others, Niels Bohr and Werner Heisenberg. This theory states that as long as no one is looking, it is possible to be in two states at the same time. This is what superposition means and what Schrödinger refers to with a dead and alive cat. It is really hard to grasp that a cat which is both dead and alive at the same time is actually nonsense. But before you start criticizing Erwin Schrödinger, you should know that he himself refers to it as a ridiculous case. Or, to be more exact, because that was a translation, in the German original he calls it a burlesque case. Burlesque, involving ludicrous or mocking treatment of a solemn subject. Or, again, a composition that imitates or misrepresents somebody's style, usually in a humorous way. Here's the thing. Schrödinger was never serious. He used the thought experiment to remind us not to naively accept as valid a blurred model for representing reality. In other words, to demonstrate the absurdity of the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics. Still, it is a bad metaphor, and on several levels. 1. Concerning the link between the source and the target. 
In the 60 symbols video I mentioned before, one of the scholars says the merit of Schrodinger's cat is that it links an event on an atomic scale to something everybody can understand, a cat being dead or alive. No, sorry, that doesn't work for the Copenhagen interpretation. It's not dead or alive, it's dead and alive. And that creates a paradox and quite frankly doesn't explain anything at all. Now I'm not qualified enough in physics to criticize Schrödinger, but I'm just very careful with quantum physics. I think it is beyond not just me, but beyond us all. And you just can't explain an event on an atomic scale, on a macroscopic scale. It doesn't work properly. Two, concerning the regard to the audience. People who understand the double slit experiment don't need the metaphor. People who don't understand the double slit experiment are much more likely to get confused. How can you be dead and alive at the same time? And finally, there's also a logic error concerning the opening of the box, who tends to confuse some people who ask, and deservedly so, why is human observation necessary? Why wouldn't the Geiger counter collapse the wave function? Or the cat, for that matter? I made this video also in response to one of those inquiries, a video called A Challenge to Clever People Part 2, Schrodinger's Cat. Link in the doobly-doo. To answer this question, human observation is necessary because of human ego? I mean, the cat probably doesn't care or think about it. Oops, still alive right now. The Geiger count itself doesn't care either, only the human who reads it. In fact, without humans, the whole experiment wouldn't exist, so that's why. But if I take the question seriously, why is human observation necessary? It isn't. Why doesn't the Geiger counter collapse the wave function? It does. Or the cat? It does too. It is an observer, a measuring device by extension, so it collapses the wave function. So, Schrödinger's cat. Bad example, rubbish metaphor, but, and I'm just guessing, very deliberately so. Schrödinger used the example to criticize the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics and, in the spirit of burlesque, to mock this way of thinking. His thought experiment is a provocation and an excellent one for what's worth. Good man, Schrödinger. The kitty thing? You know how sensitive people get when you put a cute pet in a box and then you add a bit of a radioactive substance and a bit of a deadly poison and then you close the box and then you should... Why not? You're no fun. So if Schrödinger has managed to argue you out of the Copenhagen interpretation, there are several other theories to explain quantum mechanics. The theory of quantum decoherence is en vogue, which roughly states that the wave function collapses because the system interacts with its environment. For sci-fi fans and lovers of parallel worlds, there is the many worlds interpretation. This theory states that there is a very large, maybe infinite number of universes, and everything that could possibly have happened in our past happened in the past of some other universe or universes. And just to clarify, and to justify my fangirly t-shirt, Schrödinger's cat may be a rubbish metaphor, but it's still the work of a genius. More than 75 years later, Copenhagen interpretation is being pushed aside by quantum decorrents, but people still can't shut up about Schrödinger's cat. Just look at the comment sections of the videos in the doobly-doo, not to mention the merchandising, uh, the t-shirts, and the use as a geek metaphor for if you want to know, you'll have to look into it. Here's a joke. Schrödinger's cat walks into a bar and doesn't... <laughs> no?